This is a real world problem. This is something that I took the picture when I was attending in a conference in Columbus, Ohio. How many of you have been there? It is not an interesting city. Like it's, it's not fun to go. And I had few hours, so I just decided to go and walk in the city. And I ran across this bridge. I thought that, okay, that would be something that I can share that with my students. So I took some pictures. I want to ask you to design part of this. I don't want you to design the entire bridge. Just focus on the connection where those cables are connecting to the deck, which is shown here. Assume that the gusset plate, what is the gusset plate, by the way? Gusset plate is this part over here, which is connecting those cables to the bottom part. The dimension of the gusset plate is given to be 18 inch wide. Height doesn't matter in this case, the thickness is 2 inches, and this is going to yield at 36 ksi, and the factor of safety required is 1.67. The cable connector we have one over here and the other one on the other side. Seven inch wide and the focus is one and a half inch. It is going to yield as 58 KSI, which is made from stronger material, but the required factor of safety is higher. It's 2.5. Also, the last part would be the bolt, which is this one. So we have one bolt here and one bolt here. The diameter is three inches and the yielding stress is 25 ksi and the factor of safety required is 3 in this case. I want to ask you just to go ahead and determine how much would be the maximum force that this connection can carry just based on the shear stress in the bolts. And I'm going to solve the rest for you, okay? Let's discuss about the first part of this, which is designing the bolts for shear. It is very important for us to visualize what kind of failure we may expect to see in this situation. To help you visualize that, I prepared some animations for you that we can watch together. So this is the 3D model that we created, and this is the types of failure that may happen on the bolts. Now, where would be the area where shear is developed? As you can see, the bolt is going to shear. We have two bolts, and each bolt is going to shear twice because we have two connectors on each side of this gusset plate, right? So based on that, I can determine what would be the area and the design equation. The design equation that we have for this case is simply stress should be smaller than the allowable stress similar to the previous cases that we had. Ta, which stands for shear stress, is a force over area and that has to be smaller than the allowable stress, which is the ultimate stress of the material divided by the factor of safety. So let's start with area. Area of the bolts would be N, which is the number of bolts that we have, multiplied by two because that is double shear connection, multiplied by area of one bolt, which is pi diameter of the bolt squared over four. And again, 2 here stands for the double shear connection, the type of connection we have. And N stands for the number of bolts. The diameter is given to be 3 inch. And based off that, the area would be 28.27 squared inch. Now I'm going to plug that back into this design equation and determine how much is the maximum force that this can carry. So we say force is limited to area of the bolts multiplied by the allowable stress. For the bolt, the yield stress is 25 KSI, and the required factor of safety in the bolt is 3. So based off that, the limiting force would be equal to 235.6 kips. Now let's talk about the second element. We have three elements that we want to design. The second element that I want to design is the gusset plate. First of all, what kind of stress do we expect to see in the gusset plate? Shear or normal? It's normal because the force is going to be perpendicular to the cross-section area. Okay, what is the critical section? Where is the section which is the most critical? Yes. Exactly, because the hole that we put in the plate are reducing the cross-section area at that section, and that would be the most critical because the force is going to be constant. If we have less area, that means that you would have higher stress. Good. To make it more clear, I'm going to show you another animation that help us to visualize that problem. So I'm going to take out those extra parts, apply the force, and this is the area where the element, the gusset plate, is going to fail. As we can see, 
the, cr the critical cross-section area is the area of the gusset place minus the area of the holes. I'm going to use sigma because that is a normal stress, and I use subscript of G, which stands for normal stress in the gusset plate. That would be equal to the force divided by area of the gusset plate, A sub G, and I add N here because that's the net area. Net area means the area minus the area of the holes. And that has to be smaller than the allowable stress in the gusset plate, which is the yield stress divided by the factor of safety in the gusset plate. Now let's determine the area. As we discussed, area would be the total area of the gusset plate, which is W multiplied by T minus the number of bolts multiplied by the diameter multiplied by the thickness of the gusset plate. Now let's plug the numbers, and based on that, area would be 24 squared inch. Now I can plug that into to that design equation and say that sigma g is a force divided by area, which is 24 squared inch, and that has to be smaller than the allowable stress, which is yield stress, or 36, divided by the required factor of safety, which is 1.67. The limiting force, in this case, would be 517 Point four kips. Okay, so that would be the answer for this part. Okay, this is not the only types of failure that may happen in the gusset plate. There is another case, which is shown down here. This is called the bearing stress on the gusset plate. In that case, bearing stress means when two elements are sitting, one is sitting on the other one. In this case, the bolt is sitting on the gusset plate. Area would be the area of this hole, as you can see, and stress is just acting on that part. So I'm going to say sigma on the gusset plate B. B stands for the bearing. That would be force divided by area of the gusset plate in the bearing, and that has to be smaller than the allowable stress in the gusset plate, which is the yield stress divided by the factor of safety. How much would be the area of the bearing in this case? That would be the number of holes multiplied by the diameter multiplied by the thickness of the gusset plate. So area in this case would be 12 squared inch. All right, now let's plug that into that design equation. Sigma G B is a force over area, and that has to be smaller than the allowable stress. And based off that, the maximum force would be 258.7 kips. That's the answer for this part. There is another part that we need to design. Let's watch another animation for the connectors. So this is the connector that we have, and in this case, the failure is going to happen in the connector, and this is the types of failure that we expect to see. Area is shown here in red, and I need to determine that area and determine how much is the stress in the connector. So I'm gonna do exact same step for solving this problem, but area would be different, and I, of course I have different factor of safety and different stress. All right, thank you very much. I'm gonna solve the rest of this if you want, but you can leave. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you next Wednesday.